just to be clear, guys and gals, this isn't soil, sphagnum, peat moss, or even loose leaf tea, although it does get some of my British friends excited, but for totally different reasons. It's coconut coir, also known as cocoa peat, coir, or just cocoa. I love this stuff because it's super clean, easy to work, and forgiving of mistakes or broken timers. Cocoa coir potting mixes are usually a mix of the powdery pith, stringy fibers, and sometimes small wood-like chunks known as croutons, all renewably derived from the husks of coconut palms left over from coconut production in places like Indonesia, southern India, Sri Lanka, the biggest producer, and to a lesser extent, Mexico, Thailand, and Brazil. In case you're wondering, the husk is the part between the outer protective shell and the inner hard shell of the coconut itself. Unlike other hydroponic growing media such as rock wool, cocoa coir isn't completely inert, despite what you may have heard. Coconut coir actually contains some inherent potassium held at some cation exchange sites, which is why growers tend to use a hydroponic nutrient that's been made specifically for use with coconut coir. It also has a tendency to hold on to calcium, and later in the growing cycle, it starts to slowly release that potassium. Cocoa-specific nutrients all contain elevated levels of calcium to counter this natural tendency. Potassium and magnesium levels are adjusted to remain in balance with the increased calcium, as well as cocoa-specific variations of micronutrient levels. Now, some some nutrient brands offer just two parts, NA and a B, designed for use throughout the whole life cycle. But more recently, separate grow and bloom formulations have emerged to provide optimal feeding during vegetative growth, transition, and bud flower and fruit production. You can buy cocoa coir potting mixes at any indoor gardening store. Sure, you might find ornamental grade cocoa coir at your big box garden center, but it's most likely not been properly rinsed of residual salts. This is a must for hydroponic grade cocoa coir, so don't get tempted by the cheap stuff. My advice is always choose a reputable brand. One and a half cubic feet should set you back between 15 and 30 bucks. Remember, coconut palms grow near the sea, so manufacturers of hydroponic-grade cocoa coir wash any residual sodium chloride away using pure water or displace it with calcium nitrate as part of the manufacturing process. I prefer bags of loose-filled media like this rather than the condensed blocks that you have to rehydrate. But this is just a personal thing. Obviously, the blocks are easier to ship and they don't take long to expand, but it's just an additional job that I prefer to forego. If I'm hand-watering pots or propagating cuttings or seedlings, I use pure cocoa coir products straight out of the bag. Some growers add 20% perlite for added aeration around the roots, especially for species susceptible the dampening off. Now, cocoa coir holds a lot of moisture. For ebb and flow systems, I'd recommend a mix that contains 30 to 50% perlite for improved drainage. You can mix this in yourself or go for a pre-mixed product like Cocoa Tech PX. I fill my pots with the cocoa, tap them down, and then wet it thoroughly with some nutrient solution until it comes out of the bottom of the pot. For most of the cuttings and seedlings, I shoot for around 200 to 400 ppm or 0.4 to 0.8 millisiemens per centimeter if you prefer EC. pH should be around 6.0. Be sure to ask your local hydro store if your cocoa coir is pH buffered, and that usually means that it's pre-treated with calcium nitrate, which helps to ensure a more suitable pH as you grow. If you have regular hydroponic-based nutrients lying around, you can still use them. Just add 100 to 300 ppms of CalMag first. I'd recommend doing this if you're using reverse osmosis water too, even with cocoa-specific nutrients. If you use PK boosters during flowering, take it easy, or you risk overloading them with potassium, causing toxicity issues, and locking out calcium and magnesium too. Remember, you need to irrigate with nutrient solution, not water, every time unless you're flushing. Aim for 15 to 20 percent of runoff to help mitigate any salt buildup issues. If you're growing in pots on an ebb and flow tray, time your first irrigation for about an hour after your lights come on and no irrigations later than three hours before lights off or during the night cycle. Because cocoa holds so much moisture, between one and three floods a day should be sufficient depending on container and plant size. Be sure to measure both the pH and the ppms of your runoff and compare it with the levels in your reservoir. If your runoff ppms are 200 or more higher than your nutrient solution, try a flush with half strength nutrients or in more extreme cases, pure water. Finally, I highly recommend fabric pots for use with all potting mixes, cocoa coir or otherwise. Plastic pots are fine, but you'll get a lot more aeration in the roots and better branching off with more root hairs by using breathable pots. Okay, I'll stop there as this is just a 101. If you want a 102, just let me know. Thanks to all of you who have hit that subscribe button. It sure puts a big smile on my coconut, as do all the thumbs up. Questions and comments below as always. Big love, prolonged hugs. This is Everest, out.